Hi, welcome to today's video of improvement in food resources. This is the final video for this chapter from class 9 NCRT CBSC Biology. In today's video, we are going to talk about animal husbandry. In the previous two videos, we have talked about the plants, how to increase the production of the plants or the crops, how to manage this production and finally how to protect this production from insects, diseases and pests. So let's start or understand about animal husbandry. The first thing when we tell or talk about animal husbandry, we think what does the term animal husbandry means. So the term animal husbandry is a branch of agriculture that deals with scientific management of the animal livestock. Previously, we were talking about plants. In this section or this part of the chapter, we'll be talking about animals, those who directly provide us with food and resources. So this is a special scientific management or this is a special branch of agriculture which deals with the scientific management of livestock. It includes various aspects of feeding, breeding and disease control. So it includes so many aspects like plants that also includes feeding, breeding and disease control. Even this includes the same. But because plants are different from that of the animal livestock, so it is dealt out differently. Animal-based farming includes cattle, goat, sheep, poultry, fishes and finally we'll talk about the bees and honey and the bees keeping also. So under animal husbandry, we are going to learn or we are going to know about proper food for the animals, proper shelter for the animals, care from the animals who are suffering from diseases and breeding of the animals. So it is the proper food that the animals need. It is a proper shelter, proper care for their diseases. And finally, the breeding that is giving rise to the next generation, which is very important. So let's start with the cattle. This is the first animals that we think of when we talk of animal husbandry. So feeding of the animals. So why is feeding of the animals so necessary? These are the animals which provide us with milk. This milk is a nutritious and is very essential of part of every mostly all human diet. It is very important for the kids and the newborn babies. It helps in plowing of the field in a small scale basis. Those Farmers having lands, holdings of a small scale, they generally depend on the cattle or the bullock or the buffaloes for plowing of the field and it also helps in the transportation which is now mostly limited to that of the villages. So these are the things or these are the ways that they help us out so they should be fed properly because the milk that the cows or the buffaloes gives us is directly consumed by us. So feeding them properly is very essential. Now let's move on when we talk of cattle. When I was talking of cattle, we refer to specially two types that is cow and buffalo. Now buffalo when we talk it is scientifically called as bubulus bubulus. It is scientifically known as bubulus bubulus, whereas cow is known as bos indicus. Now, the cows and buffaloes, they are eating of two types. One is the milch animals and the other is the draught animals. Now, let us understand what are milch animals. Milch animals are those animals which produces milk. So, the animals which produce milk are called milch animals. They are mostly the female cows that we talk about, female cattle. So milk is produced during the lactation period. Now the cows are, does not, any of the cows, the female cattle, they do not give milk throughout their life. It is only during the lactation period that the milk is produced. 
so it is during that time that the milk is obtained from that particular female cattle whereas draught animals these animals are kept or maintained by human beings for working purpose for transportation it can be for the plowing of field or it can be for any other purposes so the animals which are used for doing labor in the fields such as carting irrigation tilling are known as draught animals so cattle farming when we talk of cattle farming it is very important to take care or proper care of these animals or these livestock because they are the ones which help us in so many ways so the first and the foremost thing that must be done in order to take care of these animals is give them a proper medication and health care the proper medication and health care is necessary because the milk that we get is directly consumed i have already told that this is very much necessary that the cows from which we are milking or which are actually the milk animals they should be disease free because any diseases or any health care problems will be transmitted directly to the human beings through the milk so it must be taken proper care of they must be given proper nutritious food because only if they get proper nutritious food even the milk that they produce will be proper and it will be nutritious and finally they should be given a proper shelter that is they should be kept in proper place with proper aeration which have a close shed so that they do not get wet in rain so all these things are very much necessary for maintaining of a proper livestock because from this livestock we actually take a lot of help so it becomes our duty also to take care of them as very very well now we move on to poultry farming so we have learned or understood about the cattle how they help us and what should be done for proper keeping or proper maintaining of this livestock now poultry is another kind of livestock and that from that we get another kind of thing like we talk that when from the cows or the cattle we get milk and also they help us in different types of labor work like that of transportation or also in the field poultry farming is done purely for food it can be for chicken that is the egg and also for meat now let's see poultry farming is the form of animal husbandry which aims at raising of domesticated birds cattle farming we move on to poultry farming we have understood in cattle farming as we need milk we need to take proper care of those animals we need to vaccinate them we need to take proper health care as well as provide them with good shelter and also nutritious food now when we talk of poultry why is it that it is so important or we have undertaken this poultry farming for animal livestock because this is the ones who have provide us with eggs as well as the meat now we can understand when we talk about the poultry farming that there is two different necessity or there is two different requirement which for which we carry on poultry farming now what are the two different requirements one of the requirements i told it is that for eggs that is we want good layers that is the the ones which are able to lay more amount of eggs so they are called the layers that is we want good layers and another type of breed we want that is the common boilers these boilers are the chickens which provide us with good amount of meat so let's see how we can get this common type where we can actually where we can get boilers which more amount of eat meat and so after cattle farming will 
talk about poultry farming. In cattle farming, we have seen that the cattle need to be taken proper care and proper health care medication needs to be given to them because these are the ones which provide us with the milk. Now let's move on to poultry farming. When we are talking of poultry farming, we think of two most common thing that we get from the poultry or from the chicken. That is the first thing is the eggs and the second thing is the meat. When we talk of eggs, we need chicken or we need poultry which will be laying more number of eggs and for more number of days. So we need good layers. That is the common layers like astrolog and isoprom. And we need some common boilers which will be producing more amount of meat like that of COP 700 and white leg horn. So these examples I've just given, it is not mandatory to remember, but if you remember one example of white leghorn as a common boiler and iso brown as that of the common layers, this will help you to write your answers better. Now, this is another form of animal husbandry. It, raise, it raises or it aims at raising domesticated birds like that of chicken, ducks, turkey and geese to produce eggs and meat for food. Now how we should go about for the increase in production of both of these. So let's have a look. Now the process of mating of two different poultry birds to get an offspring with the traits of both the parents is called crossbreeding. Like we have also understood or we have studied in during the plants, the process of hybridization, even during the chicken, the same thing is done. So what do they do during crossbreeding? That is one of the exotic, exotic poultry variety that is leghorn is crossed with an indigenous variety that is a seed. Now the aim for this hybridization is to get more number and good quality chicks tolerant to high temperature because this indigenous variety of seed is tolerant to high temperature because the Indian subcontinent had a higher range of temperature. So it is very important that the breed that is developed should be able to sustain in that high temperature of India. And finally also maintenance low maintenance requirement that is it can be maintained at a lower cost which is also very important for us when we are thinking of the farming on a large scale so for all these reasons they actually developed an improved variety from the by crossing of the exotic leghorn and the indigenous assi now let's see when we talk of the poultry farming the boiler production how does it go or what has to be done when we are doing for the boiler production? That is good production of poultry birds for the management practices, nutrition, food and proper health care is very important. So this is a very common factor for anything, for any livestock that we are maintaining. We have to give it a proper nutritious food and proper health care. The chickens must be fed with vitamin rich nutritious food with adequate fat. See this we are going for a boiler production. When we talk of a boiler production we want chickens which will have a good meat quantity because this is for which they are bred for. This is for which they are grown because they want or they should develop a good weight at a less amount of time. So they are given proper nutritious food with vitamin rich food and also with adequate fat so that they develop fat and the meat amount is more. The care must be taken to avoid diseases, death and timely medicines should be given. The mortality rates of the chicken should be less because death can increase the infections and diseases among the poultry and they should be given proper checkup and medicines. These include also maintenance of temperature. The 
place where they are kept they should be properly maintained of the temperature hygienic conditions and should be free or free of pests and diseases these are the important factors which should be kept in mind when we are going for the boiler production the first thing is it should be given proper diet with adequate fat and vitamins because this will only help in the increase of the weight which is very much important for boiler production but when we are thinking of egg layers that is the layers so what is required here also nutritious food is required but this nutritious food is somewhat different from that of the boilers so what is it the ratio of the daily food for boilers is protein rich with adequate fat while the level of vitamins a and k a and k is kept high in poultry feeds they start laying at the age of 5 months so we can understand for the egg layers that is the level of vitamins a and k are kept at a high level than that for the boiler for the boiler it is vitamin and it is with adequate fat that is required for the boiler production and it is maintained or this particular breed is made in such a way that they start laying eggs at the age of 5 months because we are aiming to get more and more amount of eggs at a loss less span of time so at the age of 5 month it starts laying eggs and this goes on because we are doing it on a commercial basis on a commercial production basis and it goes on to a duration of about 500 days so this is the difference between the boiler production and egg layers we are aiming at something different so the maintenance the care everything is done differently now let's move on to fish production now fish is such a livestock which is a rich a very rich source of protein and as it is an animal protein it is easily digestible and is a very rich source of vitamin a and d so there are two ways of obtaining fish one is from the natural resources that is from the oceans the rivers the lake that is through capture fishing that is you go into this natural resources and fish the fish stock or the fish livestock from there and the other is the culture fishing other is in a man made place or in a water body like that of a pond or a man made pond what happens these fishes are cultured they are made to grow in that water one is the fishes are bred naturally so from there we go and fish and take it out while the other in a man made water body it is made to grow and once they are grown once they are properly grown to be taken they are then taken and sold it in the market so for let's see how this capture fishing is done now capture fishing when we talk it is mostly for the marine fishes now the marine fishes means the brackish water the fishes which are in the salt water marine fishes comprises of fresh production in the coastline and the deep seas now india we know is a peninsula so india is covered with water on its three sides and the one side is covered with land so we can understand we have a huge coastline starting from gujarat and ending it in west bengal the huge coastline so many states are there which actually gets the coastline so there are number of states in india which mainly depend on fish as their item or as their daily food so these fishes are mostly many of the fishes are taken or they are taken by the process of capture fishing now out of these when we take or talk of capture fishing most of the fishes that is obtained from the oceans and the seas include some of the varieties like pomfret mackerel tuna 
sardines and bombay duck. Now marine fish of high economic value including millet, mullets, betki, pearl spots, prawns, mussels and oysters. Now these oysters are also cultivated for pearls and also they are eaten. When marine fish stocks gets further depleted, the demand for more fish can only be made by culture fisheries. Now this fishing habit from the marine or the natural resources is a continuous process. It goes days, day in and day out. This amount or the fishing amount of the marine fishes is getting depleted. For that, it can be only met. So this demand of the fishes can only be met through culture fishes. That is the fish production by an artificial means. So what is that? It is the mainland fish or inland fisheries. When we talk of the mainland fisheries, it is when we go on through the natural resources for fishing. And we call up the inland fisheries that is in a man-made water body, we are culturing fishes. Now let's see what is it. Fish farming can be done in a composite fish culture system. Now in composite fish culture system, what is that system? It is basically growing of four or five different species of fish together in a man-made water body. Now out of this four or five species that is selected, some are Indian or some are indigenous species while some are exotic species. And they are selected in such a way that the layer or the portion of the water that they stay are different from each other. The species are selected so that they do not compete for food. As a result, the food is available for all parts of the pond. Like Katla are surface feeders, Rohu are the middle feeders and Mrigals and the common carp are bottom feeders. So this Katla, Rohu and Mrigal, if it kept together, they can survive together because they stay in different parts of the water layers. Some stay at the top, some stay at the middle and some stay at the below. So there is no fighting for food in all parts of the water body. So this is how it is done, the composite fish culture system. That is four or five species of fishes are kept together, they are bred together. And the selection, some are exotic, some are indigenous and they are selected in such a way that each of the species stay in different layers of the water body so that there is no insufficiency of food in the water body. Now finally we have come to beekeeping. When we talk of beekeeping what does it term means? So beekeeping or beekeepers. Beekeeping is the process and beekeepers are the person who follow the process of beekeeping. So beekeeping is also known as apiculture. It is the maintenance and management of bee colonies on a large scale in order to collect honey and beeswax. So the most common thing or the common aim for beekeeping is honey. The, that is the main aim for beekeeping. Along with honey, we also get beeswax. Because with these beeswax, we actually make many petroleum jelly. It is made in for the wax or the candles. Sometimes it is used in other preparation of other creams and moisturizers. The local varieties of bees are used for the commercial honey production. Now the local varieties which are found, they are used for honey production and they are Apis serena indica. The most common variety of bee that is found that is Apis serena indica commonly known as the Indian bee, Apis dorsata known as the rock bee and Apis flori known as the little bee. So these are the mainly three species of bees which are actually uh, cultured or which are grown on a large scale for honey. 
and the honey that we get how can we determine the quality or how good is the honey that we are buying now when we buy honey we actually don't know how from this honey was produced we all know that the bees goes to flowers and collect nectars these nectars are drank by bees or they are taken in the or they are eaten by the bees and through the ways of their digestion they produce honey which is then secreted out and kept in the bee hive from this bee hive we collect the honey so we can understand the flowers the nectars that the bees collect from the flowers are the main source of honey production so the better the flowers the better the nectars the better is the quality of the honey that we get so the physiochemical properties of honey are an important indicator of the quality and the origin of honey the physiochemical characteristics of the honey depends on the flowers used by the honey bees for nectar the pollen collection and as well as the regional beekeeping practices and environmental climatic variations so many things actually depend on for the quality of the honey that they produced by the bees it depends upon the flowers that are nearby what is the quality of the flowers and what is the quality of the nectar that that flower produces and also the environmental factors the environmental conditions the temperature all matters a lot in the production of good quality honey so this brings to the end of the chapter of an improvement in food resources we have discussed or we have completed the chapter in three different videos ranging from the plants and how to improve the plants or the plant resources how to manage the plant resources how to protect the plant resources and the plant produce and finally in that of animal husbandry under which we have covered for cattle farming we have covered for uh, poultry farming we have covered fish production and finally we have done with the beekeeping so this brings to the end of the chapter of improvement in food resources if you have liked my video please like share and subscribe to my channel you can also subscribe to the button that comes on to the video till then take care stay safe and in my next video we'll be coming up with something different something new so let's wait and watch what i get up with next thank you take care goodbye